Hey, I'm Big and I Brick, and welcome to another edition of the Seller Stream. I got Great South Bricks with me. He's uh, sounds like doing some parting in the chat. We got Brick Quest, Just Another Brick Life, and Lego Freak. What's going on, fellas? How are y'all? Uh, so, as promised, this week we're going to delve into how do I update the prices in Bricklink via Brickstock, and that's going to be uh, basically using the tools within Brickstock to do stuff. Um, and not using the tools in Bricklink. So we're going to get onto that later on, and we're also going to answer questions that y'all left in comments from last week's show. So, but as of right now, let's see if we got any questions in the audience tonight, or comments or anything like that. Revit Bricks and Kittenville Ranch, how you doing? What do you got going on this week? Nothing much. I finally cleaned up my layer room. Nice, nice. So we had a tour tonight. And now I'm stuffing my face with fries. Ah. Uh, part out some stuff. Um, Minecraft Village, just, just one of those. But other than that, nothing really. What you? I just finished doing the pink bag on the brick box and uh, stuck about uh, 20, 25,000 items in the store this weekend. Oh, okay. Came just shy of 1.1 million. So, 1,098,000. Well, getting close. Getting close. It's a. Uh, Difficult with a one person thing, you know? Oh, yeah, definitely. No employees and stuff to help out. I've got family, that's it. And then I got uh, eight copies of the Cater M7 going in this week as well. Oh, cool. Have you built that? Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Like, I don't know, I don't know if there's any idea sets that I didn't really enjoy. Yeah. I, I liked them. Pretty much all of them. <coughs> you uh, delve into the um, the hype from this week. The hype. The hype. Oh, I can't see what that is. What is that? It's the Millennium Falcon. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I, I, I didn't even try to get it. I looked at it at the store before it came out. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, that's a lot of diapers I can buy with that. <laughs> yeah, I'll, uh, I'll pick it up in two years from Cheap Ass. Oh, yeah. I don't think I even have anywhere that I'll be able to put it. Unless I hang it vertically on a wall or something. I think that's what, what is going to have to happen for the most part is it's going on a wall like this in some scene. That would be pretty cool. You know, if you, if you did like... Put it on if you put it on your wall like this. I mean, you got wall space. Uh huh. If, if you're not in your Lego room, presumably you have wall space, and that's probably a really good place for it. If you also want to build the scene from where when he's escaping, the, what is that, a, a, a space worm or whatever thing's called? Yeah. You know, up from the planet's surface and draw the thing. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. But I did uh, this week. I did find a, um, an assembly square for 180 bucks, still sealed. Where'd you Where'd you? Say what? Where'd you find that? Is that this uh, like an overstock type store? They get damaged boxes and they mark them down about 50 percent. But except for this, oh, is that the uh, is that the same one that Doc used to use that uh, bricks are? said the name of on air and ruined it for about two years for people. Maybe. <laughs> See, that's what it, people ask. Like, how come you don't say the names of places you go to? And it's that's because wrong. of that. It's specifically because of that is because people will go off on it. I remember when I uh, first started on YouTube, Clutch, myself, 
uh, Czar and a couple other people were using what we quoted, uh, what we called the the golden site, a uh -huh. lot. Um, and then Brixar had mentioned what the golden site was, not by saying the golden site because he didn't. I don't think he watches my videos or really clutches videos that much. Um, he didn't know that we were referring referring to it as the golden site, but he had said what it was, and uh, it soured it for years and years. Because people would just go there and now they knew a good source and you know once one person knows it, it's not just that one person in the video that sees it it's the five people that they tell right yeah is it what i put in the um internal chat that's the golden site yeah yeah that's why we don't say it that's why we don't talk about it because it's, it's awful as it seems so we'd love to talk about something like that um because of the you know the 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 background of the organization. Um, but uh, you can't really talk about it because people just go and they, first of all, they don't, they, people don't research first. They don't see what things are going at. Mm -hmm. And they just bid what they think it should go at. And if you sit back and watch, like my, the place where I was getting my stuff off eBay is sour right now. That's why I haven't had any eBay hauls is because what used to go for twenty five dollars is now going for fifty five dollars. Oh yeah, yeah. People, a lot of people figured out where it was, like the exact place that I was buying from, and started buying there. And like, I've talked to the people that run it, mm -hmm. and they laugh. They love it. They're like, yeah, we know when somebody in your videos figured out where you were buying from because you stopped buying for a while. Oh yeah, and I they mean, don't mind. They don't mind. They know I'm coming back. You know, I I, I still give them advice all the time on how to feature their auctions and and stuff like that to more, make them more selective for people and sort of drive up that price for them as well. Um, but yeah, like I yeah, said, last week, uh, I, you've got to set your own personal price point and you've got to hold that price point for everything that you do. If that's the way you're going to do it. Yeah. Cause otherwise you find yourself breaking your own rule repeatedly. There's a good eBay store called Great South Bricks. There's a lot of great stuff, you know. I'll throw that out there. <laughs> <laughs> Donnie's saying, yeah, it's tough to find a good deal out there. And that's because, um, to be perfectly honest with you, it's, it's because it's the propensity for all of us to share. Mm -hmm. You know? I did um, one night. I saw a few auctions on there that I really wanted to bid on. So what I do, I don't sit there and watch it. I just bid the max I'll go. Mm -hmm. and I just don't mess with it. And I never win. So I was doing like three or four of them. I won all of them one night. Yeah. And I was like, oh, crap, because I didn't have enough money in my PayPal to do it. <laughs> oh, in the gold, on the golden site? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, way back when, you used to put in like – uh let's say there was 40 available auctions and you would put in $1 above on all 40 auctions. Mm -hmm. There was a good chance you were winning half of that. Crazy. Yeah. I mean, just, I did find a, a bunch of good deals there, but I mean, I would buy some used bulk there and then I would just get so tired of messing with it. I just kept it all. Hold on, I gotta uh, I gotta put somebody in timeout for encouraging the purchase of Levin. <gasps> yeah, yes. that's a timeoutable offense. That's timeoutable offense. <laughs> we will not we will not Lepin. We will not encourage Lepin. Lepin Lepin is bad for everybody because Lepin does trampling all over the uh you know basically it, it's trampling all over what uh you can look at Brixar's video it's a lot better yeah yeah oh, i just had to block a fall man because it wasn't a fall man yeah definitely yeah oh it's a fall man no it's not all right um weapon is driving down the value of Lego worldwide, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's it's just not something to be supported. It's great, you know, if you have no budget or whatever, that's fine. But don't say you're a Lego fan. 
if you're going to go buy like a weapon. You know, just admit it. Like, I'm a fan of bricks. Right. You can't hear me eating, can you? Oh, I totally can. Um, oh, crap. All right. <laughs> so it's funny that people are talking about the automated bidders on eBay. And eBay is actually, since I'm not a seller on eBay, um, I, I think it's funny because on some of the, the um, some of the places where I bid for auctions, it's always got a good intent behind it, meaning it's always an altruistic in, uh, organization. Um, I really appreciate like the Lighthouse for the Blind and stuff like that. So when I do that, uh, if I find somebody who's bidding on something against me that's using an automated bidder, I always slowly drive up the price of their auction until it hits the max and then leave it there. Yeah. So I, I know I'm not going to win it because they're already way above what I'm willing to pay. But if they're willing to spend more money and it's going to go towards an altruistic organization, uh, right. I'll help them along. So be warned about the automated. There's a lot of people like me that do that. Lego Freak, yeah, there's always people that play the dual-sided game on eBay and stuff like that where they they bid they bid and they win and they're also the second bidder. But it's not too hard for a computer to figure that out. You know, there's algorithms that run all the time, and if they're constantly seeing, you know, one person defaulting on the auction and the second time, second person always winning that auction, and they're both coming from the same IP address. Yeah. 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 This seems like too much work. Adam saying that I took a uh, baseline drop. <laughs> um, yeah, there's all kinds of and, and people. People probably want to tune in here to hear how to game the system, and since I don't game the system to begin with, um, I don't know how to how to do that. Right. But um, what I do know how to do is show folks how to. So the question is, I'll go back to that, sorry. Comment was from Xfinity21, our friend over in the UK. Hey, Big B, could you please show how to look at the locations of buyers who have made orders so I can see what other countries slash states I've shipped to? Thanks, as always. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some sharing. Sharing. So sharing is sharing. Hopefully this is not going to screw me. Uh, I've already got it set here to complete it, so you can't see any of my orders. But we can go to summary here, and we go to by location, with the flags over here on this side. And it'll give you all the countries that you've shipped to, and then you know, all that other great stuff. Not too hard to find right under summary on your orders received page. Yeah, almost 90% of my order is going stateside. And I probably could improve on that a lot if mm -hmm. I went and upgraded or updated, I should say, my uh, my terms page and put down what my shipping costs were for those countries. The only problem is is you might sometimes run into somebody that's like, hey, you said it was going to be 532 and it came back 614. Why is that? Like, because packaging, because um, you never know. I mean, the buffer of how to package is always off by a little bit. Yeah, I just I don't even know why I put them on. Let me check. I think I just put starts at thirteen, whatever, and then um, Canada starts at whatever they start at. Yeah, thirteen. Uh. Yeah. Man, I start shipping to Canada for two dollars and thirty six cents. Well not Canada. Not Canada's thirteen. It's it's a lot lower, but I still can't figure out how you do that though. Especially to Australia. 
Oh wow, Australia is a little bit more. It's like three dollars and twenty six cents. Right. Still, that see that cost me thirteen twenty five. Because I do not game the system, but I do read the rules. Right. And if you read the rules, you can play the game. Um, plus, learn. I've got a lot of experience with ordering from other people, uh -huh. so I see how they package stuff as well. Mm -hmm. I learned from that. That's one of the. That's one of the. the one thing that uh, you should always look at when you're buying from somebody on Bricklink is have they ever bought from anyone else? And the stores that I have had the most problem with were the ones that have literally never made a purchase on Bricklink ever before to anyone. So they don't know how other people package their orders. So. Yeah, uh, before I started selling, I made sure I placed two or three orders first just to kind of see what I liked and what I didn't like about what they did. Um, it's all about it's all about realizing that orders have to run through a machine. They're not like hand. Nothing's handled by people except for when it's at the counter or it's being delivered. Everything else is done basically by a machine, and you have to go. You just have to fit the dynamics of the machine. The machine's going to flow best when it's a flat order as much as possible. If, right. if basically, if, if your order is flat, it's going to go and it's going to go cheap. Yeah. The, uh, the four pound thing is still there. There's a four pound limit. So. Let's see. Any other questions? Casey Metro, uh, if you're still around, I'm going to want to talk to you at some point and possibly have you on the show to show off uh, exactly how long it takes for you to fill an order. Uh, when you do a photo shoot along with it. Have you seen Casey Metro's Instagram account? Yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm like, God. Yeah, it, so it, is, it is. No doubt. It, it's very cool, but it's just the, the time consumption that he puts into uh, the fiddling. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan of Noling. Or no, yeah, Noling. I just, yeah. I never do it. And that's just, I don't know. I, sometimes I'll just like throw everything in a pile, take a picture of it when I get bored, but uh, Another question from the chat. Right, keep, keep, Sorry, keep go going on with it, but still. <laughs> uh, have you ever had somebody complain about a damaged package? Hmm, I've had a damaged package, but not really a complaint. He thought something was missing. But a package, no. These I don't sell sets, so if I do sell sets, a poly bag is already wrapped in there. What about you? Um. I did once, and I got bad feedback for it, but that's because the person specifically asked to ship a raised base plate in a bubble mailer, and like, went through, I went through like the whole warning beforehand, like, man, you're not taking insurance on this, like, I'm not going to be responsible whatsoever, Yeah. blah, 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 uh, and then they, they gave me the, the negative feedback and everything else, even after I gave them a, uh, I did power and give them a, uh, a refund via PayPal for it but that's because I was like a, a less than you know less than 100 feedback seller or, or less at that point and it was just one of those uh, yeah. like this is the price of doing business I've, had, I've, I've definitely not learned my lesson on the price of doing business multiple times you can see my feedback from that like difficult seller difficult buyer sorry it's like I sell thousands of stuff, but yes, I don't know what I'm doing, and you do. Zero feedback buyer. Yeah, I don't always. I don't try to approach it that way, but it's no. I mean, it, that's just sometimes I just want to like, dear sir. You really feel that way. You might feel that way, but you can never approach it that way. Oh no, uh -uh. never do. It's the internet, and uh, you know the buyer is always right. Although I have had. On the very early days, I did have somebody cancel an order um, just to place another order in someone else's store for a part that was one cent less. <laughs> I had a guy relatively recently, he messaged me and he wanted me to cancel certain items from his order. 
And I realize by looking at them, all those items are on the picker brick wall right now. I I just went along with it. it is I mean, he's he's a really good buyer, like fifty dollar plus orders just about every single time. Over ten orders with me. He's a local guy. I just let him do it. He is I probably got this from the pick a brick pick a brick wall myself. Ralph is saying uh he's given grief for sending a pass for um for for uh, he's he's given grief for I guess getting a package with missing parts, but people have always made good on it, and they should. Whether it be um, whether it be just refunding them for the parts immediately that were missing, or shipping them off to them, or or working out some sort of deal. Usually, the best deal to try to work out is, hey, you've got something coming your way. If you place an order, you'll get free shipping on it, mm. you know? and that's. Yeah, I think I bought a, a hair piece from you because I was missing it. Um, I just sent a message saying, hey, the package is on the way, but it's missing this, but it will be the hair piece will be arriving. It was like a, a day later or something like that, or two days later. So, you know, communication yeah. is always the best. Yes, always, always, always communicate. And there might be, there might be things being changed in the future to the portal that uh, will require you to actually communicate in a very timely manner mm -hmm. with your clientele. So there are going to be changes, the proposed changes to the, the seller's changes that they've talked about for the past four years are, uh, they're working on them. I know that. I know that they're actually working on them right now. Yeah. The automated checkout would be great. That's my big that's supposed, that's supposed to be part of it, I believe. It's, it this seems like it'd be so easy, but then again, I don't know anything about that stuff and programming. It's it's easy to do because it's already out there and they can copy the code. It's it's yeah. pretty easy to do it. It's getting the parameters in there. It's getting most. It's getting the volume stuff in there. Yeah, there's a lot of information. The weight, the weight is one thing, but it's the volume and, and calculating the volume and everything else. So it'll be it'll be a bitch for a while for people to figure all that out, but. You know, it'll it'll be worthwhile in the end. Um, the only problem I have with that is I have items that specifically have to go in a box. Yeah. So, like those ones, I don't have set up on Brick Owl to be. You have to put in a, a quote in for those. Yeah. And it would be nice to just be able to figure out some way to be like, you know, if this is purchased. Add, you know, six point eight ounces to the order weight, uh, up to you know, sixteen of these can be purchased, right. and it will all go, you know, with just that little bit added to the purchase price. I did take your uh, advice this week. Advice. And I did a set of like a five dollar minimum. I did a one dollar lot average with just one dollar minimum. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I feel about it yet. Are you getting a lot of are you getting a lot of mini orders? Yeah, which but they're easy pulls. They're easy pulls, right? It's not like a oh, yeah. not like it's not like thirty or forty lots on a five dollar order. Correct. It's, it's one lot, very, one order, easy. one lot per order. It might have only cost you a buck, but mm -hmm. if you've got your if you've got your shipping set up to cover the thirty five cent charge from PayPal already, mm -hmm. which is why I don't ship for. The PayPal cost price, which is why I ship for the UPS counter price. Right. Um, right. You could you could get screwed someday as well with PayPal not being up and working, and then you've quoted that price, and you've got that money out of pocket plus other money out of pocket. But the difference between covers the bricklink expenses, covers the PayPal expenses, covers you know all of the additional taxes that are put upon you fit into that small little gap right there, and then I don't have to manipulate the price of the brick. To cover that, yeah, it's a. I always looked at it as like, okay, at what price does it make it worth it for me to go in here and deal with it? But then again, it's like, it was so fast to pull orders. Like literally, it was two bionicle pieces <laughs> and they're the same piece. And the order was, I think, a dollar fifty. <laughs> but I mean, it took. 30 seconds to do it. Yeah, it's you really are. I mean, if you're willing to do that, 
you know, to have the additional orders come in for the lesser dollar, mm -hmm. at least you're driving up more interaction with the community. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's, I mean, it's, give me another week. I'll see if I actually like it because I got a busy week coming up. So we'll, we'll see. <laughs> I've been running the $1 thing over on owl for over a year and that's it. Yeah. So, but Owl, like we've talked about, Owl is a totally different marketplace than, than Link because of the clientele. Yeah. And uh, BrickBiter says, uh, according to BrickLink, it's three days you have to respond. And that that is, the correct language is up to three days to respond. Right. So they the, the thing is, is it's a customer service driven portal is where they're pushing towards. They are pushing towards being the place for everyone in the world to go for their Lego needs for everything. So they're really driving customer service experience over there because they've had a lot of problems with it in the past. Mm -hmm. So if, let's say that there was a, a point-based system, not that there is or will be or anything like that, but let's say that there was, you know, and you got 10 points max for this certain interaction with a customer that sent you a message and you replied within an hour, you get 10 points if right. you replied in, you know, three days, you'd get four. Right. That type of thing. Or you just have uh, your, you know, any, I have my messages hooked up to email because my phone, I can get on there real quick. Well, that's the problem. Back. That's the problem with the way that they've had it set up. If you, with Owl, if you reply through your phone just directly right away, it zaps up to their email server. Mm -hmm. and then down to the customer. BrickLink doesn't have an email server that's set up like that. If you reply directly through your phone, BrickLink doesn't know the message happened at all. No, I mean, like, so, I actually, I have BrickLink bookmarked, almost like an app on my phone. I just log in real quick because I see the email. Okay, so you just actually message them. I mean, it's not, right. it's not iPhone or whatever friendly, like the other side no, is. No, no, my, my suggestion to them is that they bring an email server online. Yeah, you know, and and do the same functionality because they've got to keep up. If they're gonna if they're gonna have if they're gonna force the seller to meet certain standards in the future, and this is only this is an, an iffy, maybe possibly happening. Like I'm making half this shit up type of situation, but this is how I imagine things going down after having many many communications with the folks from Bricklinks at shows. Um, is that if they want to have that sort of thing? they've got to keep up with technology for the seller so that the seller doesn't have to go to their portal to make the communication. You know, that's, that's an ex, that's an extra superfluous step that is not necessary. Right. Did you keep your old layout on the new or, on the, uh, Brooklyn profile? You know, the, they had the new layout. Oh, uh, I, for, Oh, for the, um, the orders received page. Yeah, just your. Oh hell yeah! Oh yeah! It, I turn it on for a minute. I'm like, I can't do this. <laughs> Went right. I'm the one that I'm the one that was communicating behind the scenes with uh, with them about, hey, this isn't fixed yet. Hey, this isn't fixed yet. Yeah, it was. Like, <coughs> yeah, yeah. I just. I just yeah, yeah. yeah, the the admin who I talk to is Jack. Okay. And okay. Jack. Jack listens, so, you know, I'm very respectful to them. They're respectful to me. Um, I don't go off on them about, you know, like, boom, there was a change, oh my God. Um, I sit there with it for a second. I play around, see if, it, see if it works, see if I like it, see what I don't like. But with the other one, like, it wouldn't even fit on my screen. You know? Yeah, like, dude had to be using, like, a 28-inch or bigger monitor to design that and didn't set it up so that it would it would shrink and then use um, a mixture of percentages and um, solid lengths to to build it and it would shrink down but only shrink down this much because of the, the lengths that he made uh, standard or whatever. Right. Um, but yeah, I didn't even try it on my on my phone. But I mean I'm using a I'm using a Galaxy tab. Oh, that's huge. Oh, yeah, dude. It weighs like four pounds. Good Maybe great. more. Let me weigh it. This is not new school anything. 
What are you talking about? Oh, is that a cell phone or is that a tablet? It's a tablet. Okay. Like one of the original tablets. It's thick. All right, so it's only 14 ounces, but still. Mm. I thought about All using right. my iPad to walk around in here and like pull orders and kind of go look at my laptop again and again, but I just, I don't know. I lost it. It's somewhere around here. But yeah, it was. All right. Yeah. Oh, God. Um, it took forever to clean this room up. It was bad. Like just, I didn't realize how many empty Lego boxes I had in my closet. If half of it filled my trunk, in my car. I'm glad there wasn't a fire here. <laughs> it would just. Gone. Oh, yeah. Boxes are a waste unless it's for yeah. a big side. Oh, they're all broken down. I just never took them downstairs. Nope, Donnie, we are just getting to the point where you get to how to update the store inventory. So that was also a question from Fubrix is can you upload a negative amount to reduce your inventory? Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. So, we uh, let me run a test run on this for a second. Oh, it's going to do my whole store inventory if I do that way. All right. So. I'm trying to save some sort of anonymity here for my for myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got it set up, I believe. All right, we are on the inventory screen right here. I'm at the bottom of it because y'all don't need to see what's above that. There's a little link here for download. You go to download and can include my stockroom inventory, but it will not download the tick mark for the item that says it's in your stockroom. So you are, if you want to, you have to think about it. You just have to remember that because it, there's some times where you don't want to download your stockroom stuff. And there's sometimes where you only want to download your stockroom stuff. So those options are right here. We are going to download XML. And we're going to just download my instructions right now. And that was it. All right. Next, what I want to do is. Stop sharing for a second. All right. Next, what I want to do is go into my downloads, show that file in the folder, change the extension from TXT to XML. That's all you got to do is just change the extension. And then go over to Rick Stock. I'll start sharing again. All right. File import XML. Go to recent places. Wait for this to. Sort. There we go. Here's all of my instructions. OK. 
Can everybody see this? Yeah. All right, yeah. class. We can, this always pops up over here with, the, this is for your discount tiers. Um, I don't play with this. So I'm just gonna make this smaller. There's a couple yeah. lots I would actually use those discount tiers for, but every time it would go into bricks talking back out, I always had a problem with it. All right. So I'm going to do control A. Wait, I'm going to do this first. This is an important one. I'll save as instructions. All right, you've got them saved. Close it. Reopen it. The reason why you're doing that is because once it's saved, it brings in a couple more of these columns here, which are the quantity originally, quantity difference, price orig or price originally, and price difference. And this is what you're going to use to see how your prices have fluctuated once you do a repricing. Control A, Control G, set the price guide, six month average, and download even if already cached. This is just in case you actually are up to date on that. It'll go in, update all the prices, and then you can see over here the changes in the prices. And then you can also sort by it, see overall. Whoa, how about that right there? $19 price difference. Oh, that's it. For the uh, wind turbine. Get out of here. Can you take that weed? Sorry. Sorry. Right. UCS TIE Fighter price dropped as well. You sell instructions? No. Holy crap. Cargo terminal. Cargo terminal. Up. By six dollars. Who would have figured? I just threw that away. Dolphin Cruiser. Up by a dollar. Threw all those away too. Ninjago Warts Combat Lair. Up by 80 cents. Who would have even thought this being Shima would appreciate ever? <laughs> but, all right, so they've all changed. What I'm going to do now is you're going to, where is it? So. It's a double button. It's it's a control E, control U. <laughs> All right. So control all again. Control E, control U. Yep. Oh, hold on. Those ones contain errors. I'm not gonna mess with them right now. So we're just gonna deselect them. But no, it's not control E, control U. It's control E, control O. No, it's not. Damn it. Where is it? All right, start talking while I'm working. Looking. All right, I'm sitting here watching too. <laughs> They're talking about throwing out boxes. I was just commenting. But pretty much, uh, if y'all wondering, I throw away all the boxes that I buy for the store. I have no use for them. It's like 
control, you control your uh, camera. Uh, they're saying that a lot of stuff you're clicking on is not showing up on the screen share. Ah, uh, there we go. Okay, it's control E. Okay. Control P. Control E, Control P. This, oh, hold on. There you go. Let me do the other screen. So it is Control E, Control P. Once everything is selected, and you want to go. See right here where you've got your list. This is the changed prices. This is the updated prices. It's not going to show you what it was before or anything else. But what I will show you is this. At least you don't have the, the dreaded red bar. All right. All right, we're going to go and instead of uh, 39 Crater Creepers, we're going to say we have 50 of them. And instead of 38 Vamposts, we're going to say we have 20. And you gotta make sure to hit enter, not just click the next one. Yeah, you gotta hit enter. That's on Excel, you can just click next one, you're good to go, but yeah. Application. All right. Again, control E, control P. A little pop up here that says there are 50 items forward. You can't see it because I'm just sharing the application, not the screen. I'm hitting yes. I'm now going back to the other screen right here. All right, I'm pasting my information in there, hitting verify file. And you can see right here, quantity 39, it's up 11. Mm -hmm. Quantity 38, it's down 18. All right, so this is how you can also manipulate all of your pricing and all of your quantity through here as well. And then you just go down to the bottom and hit submit. Da, 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 da. It's pretty simple. We can play around with some other stuff in Brickstock if people want. Oh, you can play with that. You can play with Brickstock for days. All Not right. So, everything. Here's how to decrease your prices or put a sale in your store. So, you should, when you, when you put a percentage in your store, for a sale, if you are selling something for a dollar and you put 25% off, sell for 75 cents, you still get taxed by Bricklink for one dollar. Correct. They they tax you at full price. So what you want to do instead is hit Control Plus key and say 10% off sale. Put it in right there. Mm -hmm. Now, did That's you just it. lower the prices about 10%? Yeah, on everything in one swoop. So. And there's also ways to do this just by clicking around, right? Yeah, there's there's other I mean, ways to do I know that. Around. I just want everyone else to. Yeah, they, they can't see when I right click. Right. So. But there's lots of other ways to do it, but these, these are the sim very simple ways. Um, if you, if you do do something like this, I always go in and see what the price differential is and see if you're doing something really crazy. Yeah. You know, and if you see a huge price difference on something, you know, ask yourself maybe why that could be happening. You know. uh, Brick Buyer says, what do you mean BrickLink taxes you? Um, Brick Buyers, what he means is the Bricklink fee, which is what three percent, um, it's uh, three, but it's three percent, but it can go down with the larger right purchase. Right. Well, let's just say it's three percent. You sell something for a dollar, they take three cents. Well, if you put it ten percent off for a sale, so it's uh, put it. If you sell something for a hundred dollars, yeah, all right. If you put it on sale for twenty five percent off. You're still going to get taxed at that three percent of three dollars, mm -hmm. not. Uh, two dollars and seventy five or two dollars and seventy five cents. So, just so you know, if you put a sale on, make sure you can justify it. 
know that they're going to do that. Yeah. And a lot of what I've noticed, I've done it both ways. I've put on sales and I've just lowered my prices through Rick Stock just for a few days and then say, you know, there's a sale going on. No one, no one will, will buy. But as soon as it says sale and they can see the 10% off, people will buy. Yeah. It's kind of weird. It is. It is. It's psychological and marketing and all that. And I've seen people do stuff too. Just a couple weeks ago, somebody put about a hundred um, Simpsons heads on sale in their store for 90% off. You know, they were like, they were like three cent Simpson heads. Oh. Um, I bought all of them. They made no money off. My, my final price was $3.75 on the order. Uh, I bought all of their glitter purple and glitter neon green cones as well because mm-hmm. those are my fetish items. I love those things. Not really fetish, like weird. Like I just collect uh-huh. the thing. It's, yeah. That's a fetish. Um, so it was, still was cheap, but I have sold five Homer Simpsons heads last week and already paid for it. Now people people give up on items too. You could tell it was a frustration thing. That was the only thing in their store on sale, and it was ninety percent off. It was just it was just like oh, I'm so sick of these things. They're uh, they're bothering me. Like how the hell are they bothering you if they're in a drawer? Like this is a personal hang up thing with you, where you know you feel you made some bad mistake and you're just sick of them. Yeah, I've I've done that before. <laughs> When my um, friction pins got to where I couldn't keep them in the drawer anymore, I was like, screw this, dude. I'm 50% off. Yeah. So I buy them. I like this comment. I so bought like a couple hundred. I put, took it back off sale because I could fit in there again. I guess, uh, some, some people say you have to include eBay and online sales as part of your income to the IRS. Yes, of course you do. Mm-hmm. It's income. Lego is not the only person or people with the mafia. You're not getting the thing is that I'm saying taxed and it's not really taxed. You're not yeah. being taxed by PayPal or by eBay. Uh, you're paying for a service on their servers. If you feel as though you can code a system to accept money that people will trust, that will interact with a common, uh, let's call it bank online and everything else. If you feel that you can do that, then you have a real case of complaining about what they pay what they charge us but i'm not complaining i will never complain about what paypal takes because they've already set up a great portal for me to do business on i don't mm-hmm. have a problem with it you know yeah, it makes it's it so easy to do yeah it's it's a tax it allows me- it wasn't paypal how difficult would this be well if they didn't have also have didn't have stripe or anything like that and I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to get on uh, Lego Freak at all. Like he's got a good point. Like, and I understand where he's coming from. Like, but at the same time, like, um, you gotta you gotta pay your dues because otherwise you go to jail. You know, nobody wants to be Wesley Snipes behind bars, right? I did. Poor Wesley. Uh, so the Vikings plunder, no. Uh, actually, if you are a business and you are purchasing items for your store, you are allowed to take the taxes that you paid on those items and basically it's a, it's you write those off with your taxes. Um, either that or you get a card that says you're a business and you get a special account with that store where they do not charge you tax. Uh, but it's a bigger pain in the ass to do that because then you got to get a manager every time you make a purchase. You got to do it up the front end. They look at you funny, and they just ask themselves, "Why the hell are these adults buying so much Lego?" Unless so. you buy Lego at Sam's Club, then they just ask you, "Is this a business?" Yes. Okay. I've had that. Well, not not doing this, but other stuff. Yeah. So, yes, I'm buying 10 pounds of walnuts for the fun of it. Yes, I'm a business. Yeah. So it's it's a bit of a pain in the neck for the stores to do that. Uh, that's why I just go the route of do it, taking care of it on the backside, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah. And Lego Freak, also thank you for understanding that I wasn't trying to make an example specifically of you, just more of people that uh, that complain about a service that's being provided to them. I know that you don't complain ever. And also, um, more and you know. Village Plunder had asked uh, if, I don't want to say this on the video because the comments won't be included, um, but if the way I showed how to download, if that's also a good way to back up your store at night, that is correct. That is the way that you should do it. It would be really great if there was a little automated system that could do that for you, but that would include a lot of sharing and permissions, and I don't think that Bricklink's willing to do that, but I would love it if somebody would come out with a little mini app that would do that for me. I'm telling you, Lego heads out there that are programmers that will learn the API and will not walk into a project the first time playing with the API mm -hmm. could make some money. Oh, yeah. Three cents at a time. No, um, designing custom software for sellers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got so many little need-based things for software. So, And speaking of software, uh, we're also going to have Brainy Bricks on in a couple few weeks to come in and talk about software that he uses on YouTube and on Facebook for his videos. Um, his own software? To, what's that? His own software? Recorders. The so software. recording software. Like it, it'll be a little brief, you know, like, hey, it's not that bad, it's not that hard to do videos type of show. Mm -hmm. um, just because basically this is our way to advertise our stores to people. And the better that you can make yourself appear on camera, the more professional you appear and the more, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's just one of those things. I mean, I'm trying to, with the show, I'm trying to work all sides of it. And Fighters is also correct again that BrickSync keeps backups, but not everybody uses BrickSync. So. Now, you asked me something last week about Brick Packer, about it syncing. Does BrickSync just does it every five minutes or every 10, whatever? You, you set, your, um, you you set, set your parameters, but they've also set maximum parameters that you can't exceed within an hour and a day. Okay. So. Um, Brick Packer just does it after an order. It syncs it about five minutes after every order. It doesn't constantly do it. It might, but I don't know about it. Does every it order on Brick Owl or every order on Brick Link? If I get an order on Brick Owl, it syncs it within five minutes. If I get an order on Brick Link, it syncs it within five minutes. And then it'll, get, it'll send me an email saying, it synced, everything was successful, or... It synced. There was one error, and I can go in and see what that was, and see if I need to do some of my inventory. And Michael Lee asks, um, "I thought you had to make a certain amount that you had to pay on taxes on eBay and BrickLink. Am I right?" Yeah, but the limit is is low. If you make more than five thousand dollars on the side, it's considered a taxable income. And I think you, you, you might be able to correct me if I'm wrong, but once it hit about twenty grand. Uh, PayPal will actually send out at 1099 or something like that. They'll send out a request for uh, either your uh, business information yeah. or for your, um, your social security number. Mm -hmm. so. And uh, the syncing, as far as how often you should sync, be sparing on that. Like, don't, don't think that you're in the front line. Um, assume that ever, just to, not assume, but always remember that everybody else is using this as well. Right. Um, you don't want to overload servers. When you start overloading servers and something possibly happens in the code, that's when all of a sudden we're putting our own DDS attack on our own portal mm -hmm. because we're, we think that we're getting orders you know, all that frequently and we need to do it every minute or every 30 seconds. You know, you know mine right, goes right. at the standard five minutes that's the setup for default. Um, even at a million brick link or a million brick store, you know, I don't feel it's, I've never had the orders come in where they overlap that frequently. I mean, I've gotten frequently more than two orders in a five minute period, but every order is different stuff. So the, the chances like, that like, you're going to have are so slim. Yeah. Yeah. One, almost 1.1 1 .1 million parts. What are the chances someone's going to buy those, the same item? In just a few minutes. On BrickLink and on BrickOwl. 
Right. Yeah. Oh, you know those parts I told you about last week that people keep buying and then not paying for? Um, the rubber that goes on the Fortrex tracks? Mm -hmm. So on bottom again. Another zero feedback buyer. I'm waiting to see if they actually pay for them. Oh, I don't know what it is about those parts. <laughs> So uh, Vikings Plunder asked another good question. If you're running BrickSync, do you need a PC running 24-7 to run it? Yes. And all you really need for that is I've got a five-year-old laptop sitting right here uh, that's got BrickSync running on it. It runs off the command prompt. Um, so it's not a true application application with a GUI behind it. It's just all, it's all command line. It's all very easy to use. And it just runs. Brick Packer doesn't. You don't have to have something running all the time, right? That one's that base. one's online. But you also pay a monthly fee for that, right? Or you pay a per transaction fee. It is one percent of your orders, right? So I made a twenty-five dollar donate or twenty-five dollar donation to the author, mm -hmm. and probably saved money. Oh yeah, definitely. But let's talk about everybody making sure that they have a registered copy of Brickstock. Yes. And let's money. make sure if you do actually go out and register Brickstock, tell them that Big B sent you and then encourage that I encouraged you to purchase this and tell them about the seller stream. Reason being is is if we can put together a consortium of people that knows that we have some sort of sway, that means we can get stuff. Mm -hmm. We can ask for stuff. We can listen to you guys say, Hey, this would be a good idea, and we can get people behind us to say I've got these amount of people that would really like to see this. We've already got people that are willing to beta test stuff, or we've already got people that are willing to alpha test stuff. Like that's where I'm trying to go with this type of thing. So I want to talk about software stuff. Uh, there's always the potential right there as well that you know we could find a developer to do something and listen to your guys' input and put out a piece of software that everybody could use. So mm -hmm. hey, you never awesome. know. And also some of the stuff that you're showing, I don't think you could do that without having a licensed version of it. Oh yeah, you can. You can't because I had a version, uh, something weird happened where it kind of got lost. I may have actually deleted it. You get, the, and, uh, you get the nag screen every five minutes. Yeah. I, I, the nag screen would kill me and I was, just, I was finally just like, why am I not paying this guy? <laughs> Anyways, go ahead. Oh, and uh, Brick Fighters also says, and this is for something, this, this is a really good suggestion for people that are more computer literate. Just go grab yourself a Pi. You know, the little handheld devices that cost 30 bucks. Um, you can get a Raspberry Pi and run it on there and it'll be fine. This, this is like a small computer, no screen disk? It's, it's like a make it yourself computer, but you can make it, you can buy it already made. Gotcha. Okay. It's for the ultra uber super duper mega geeks. It's a cool thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Big B, are you going to Philly Brick Fest this year? Yeah, if they have it, I'll probably go. I still haven't been to any of the big Lego conventions. I've been to the one in Birmingham, Alabama twice. I forget what it was called. Brick Fair. Brick Fair, Birmingham. Yeah. And it's a uh, it's real small. Honestly, I got a little bored the second time I went. It was just more of the same. But I wouldn't have been there or anything. I just went to go look around. There's uh people back on there talking about the ten ninety nines. And yes, like or um PayPal definitely does send ten ninety nines out there. I've got ten ninety nine from PayPal the past couple few years. Um yeah, not a big deal. Just, yeah. You should have an accountant already. If you are actually going to run a business, you should either have an accountant or a buddy who's an accountant who will work for beer. You know, one of the two. Because there's a shitload of things that you're missing out on that you don't know, that you don't even realize about your store that you can take advantage of. Not yeah. take advantage of, but like that's already yours for the for the taking, for the using, uh, it's already law, um, and you just probably don't know about it. I kind of lucked out. My mother-in-law is uh, an accountant. 
So I pretty much, you know, we gave you a grandbaby. That's your payment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've uh, a buddy of mine from college from the fraternity house is a, he's a CPA with an entertain entertainment accounting firm. Like you two is one of their clients. That's cool. Um, well, he knows all about the other side of accounting as well. So when I told him that I was uh, doing a YouTube channel, he was, you know, he was a little drunk, but he was just like, oh yeah, man, all I gotta do is show off every single box you ever buy, make a video about every single box, and every single one will be a write-off. He's like, yeah, it will, but at some point they're gonna say no. They're gonna be like, ah, we know what you're doing. <laughs> But uh, he did tell me a number of things that I've discussed previously that I'm doing with uh, with my kids in the store to enable them to have a better future, which is I'm actually, my kids are actually legally employed um, and file taxes every year. And even though they don't make enough money to actually have to file taxes, we file the taxes for them anyways, because that allows them, that opens up the doors for investments and allows us to uh, open up a Roth IRA Retirement account for our children at a very young age. Yeah, so. these the only other options uh, five twenty nine or the other one. You can do an educational, but this is since they're actually paying taxes and they have an actual job. You can it's it's it comes under the realm of entertainment. So the only way you can employ a child at that age is in entertainment. Mm -hmm. So my kids have been hand and voice models, or at least they were in the beginning. So. It's like, hey, why are you in here? Just, you know, dab real quick. Okay, get out. No, um, you actually, unless you're huge, you actually have to have them doing something. Yeah. You know, the way the, the way that my buddy explained it to me, it was like, yeah, like, uh, you know, it's like Garth Brooks will have his kid come out on stage for 30 seconds, wave to the camera, and walk away. And that's their appearance. He's like, you can't do that because you're not that big. <laughs> They can help pull orders, or at least a, a few lots. Uh, that's that's I'm 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 testing those waters right now, man. It's just it's it's all right. It's more um, me walking around with the cart and the the tablet and having the order up in front of me, mm -hmm. and asking and asking him as he's looking at the monitor what's next and how many I have to pull of it and how many are left. It's getting him used to looking at the screen and understanding what all the stuff is, not really participating in it. But I don't think he really realizes that I've got the, the tablet there in front of me um, figuring it out before he knows. So Right. Yeah, I've had my nephew in here. Of course, he's in third grade now. <laughs> about a year or two. Or no, about a year ago, I got him in here. I just say, go to... A17, grab seven of them. He'll do it. He didn't know what he's doing, but he'll do it. But I think now he actually would understand. So the last question for the night is coming from <laughs> Michael Lee. Uh, what do you think of underage BrickLink buyers and sellers? I really don't have an opinion about the general term underage BrickLink buyers and sellers. Um, because there's certain maturity levels to everyone. And I've bought from several underaged BrickLink sellers and had and constantly have uh, underage BrickLink buyers that are more mature than some of the adults that I know that are running stores. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm actually... So to make, a, to make a long story short, and then I'll tell a little bit of the story and then we'll go out. Um, if they're a good buyer or a good seller, um, unless this is my opinion only, my opinion only, and this goes against the standing of BrickLink and what their administration, of course, would like you to do. But, and I told them straight up as well that I'm not going to snitch on kids if they're good kids. Um, and it's just that. You know, if they're good kids and they're doing what they're supposed to be doing and they're following all the rules and they're paying promptly and they're, you know, doing or shipping promptly and doing everything that they're supposed to as a store, why are you going to penalize them? 
There is no more paper routes. There is no more place for a kid who's 15, 16, 17, who's got some sort of economic streak in them to get a job to do anything anymore anyways. If they're selling Lego, they're doing a good job at it, they're not screwing up, why destroy their world? You know, you could say, well, you know, their store hurts my store because it's because it exists, but that's pretty dickish. Um, and I do know Brickling sellers that as soon as they find out about an underage store, they call it in and they have it shut down and shut off and because it, it, it's there and it interferes with their stuff. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't deal with that. Like I don't, I, I don't give them crap for doing it, but it's just one of those, it, that's not creepy, but dirty. Yeah. In my opinion. One of my best buyers I don't know if I ever bought anything from an underage seller. I don't know. I don't ask. I mean, I just, you know, you're just a store on a screen. I don't know anything about you. I'm just going to buy from you. But one of my best sell or buyers is a, a kid from the Atlanta area, just not too far from me. I mean, I was, his first order was with my store, and I kind of had to say, you know, goods, or, goods and services, not personal payment. Hey, update your address. And he did it all. And then I've had at least 10 orders from him ever since. And he's a, you know, in good good orders too. So, I mean, I don't have a problem with it. I mean, but if you get on here, I, I've also had another one, zero feedback, get on here. I was like, hey, I really like your store. Um, will you sell me this part for half off if I buy all of them? No, that's actually against the rules and I just don't negotiate prices. I just do that enough at work. I don't, work I, don't respond to that. Home. Huh? I don't respond to that. Yeah, I just I just told him no and then he I just delete the message. And that's gonna be a, that's gonna be a problem if they make changes in the future where you have to actually respond to to people that aren't customers. I don't mind I'll reply all day long, keep up conversations with my people who have bought from me. But people are that just hop on there and are just like Hey, I want all of this for you know, ninety-five percent. No. The reason but. I did answer him normally I wouldn't, but lives very, very close to that first buyer I was talking about, to where I'm pretty sure they're friends, and I didn't want to be. You know, I kind of want to be like, "Hey, can't really do that." I mean, oh, with the are you talking about with the rubber studs? Oh no, that's that's totally different. Okay, that's your. Well, I want to talk about that. I want I want to talk about that next week though, because that's like that's your plight. That's your plight element. So I definitely want to, to talk about that to see if anybody else has any plight. Uh, not polite plight, like diseased. Um, so we're gonna close it out there. But here's the thing: as far as defending yourself against underage buyers. Um, I believe, I do not know this for a fact, but like I said, I've, I've, I've done my own diagnostic or diagnosis on um, how I think things are being run at BrickLink. And I really think that when you are going and saying, hey, I got an underage buyer here, if they did not put their parents' name on the account and they used their own name, BrickLink's just going out, checking the public tax records for that address, seeing what the names on it are, and then Googling that person, you know? And Google in the other name. And if it's some, you know, twelve-year-old kid who's on a little league team, they know right away that uh, yeah, this is underage. Your your feedback gets thrown, and their food the feedback from them gets thrown away. Yeah. So yeah. now one thing that's weird about my state, seventeen's an adult, but eighteen is an adult for the country. So it's one of those weird things where like this kid I was talking about is he really an underage buyer? When you got to go by the you got to go by the laws of the land, and the law of the land is eighteen years old on Bricklink. Yeah, yeah. Federal law yeah. waves. Well, in general, federal trumps state. Whatever. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, but has nothing to do with federal or state. It has to do with right, regulations right. of the, the private website. Um, the right contracts for a living. And I just get on about that. All right, we went a little long tonight. Um, we'll be back next week. Don't forget if you have, I'd like to see, honestly, just like a shitload of more questions. So as you guys are going through your work week, pulling orders, putting stuff away, 
something weird happens, something like that, type them in the comments for this video, and I'll know right away to see them and be able to read them on air to everybody. And then don't forget, turn in next week. We'll be at our regular time. Hope everybody did well and checked out the auction over at Holland and Ballin. We will always be offsetting the show uh, by an hour in order to accommodate their their auctions. Um, you guys should check them out as well and go sub to them. Appreciate everybody coming in. Go check out Great South Bricks, Brickling Store, and more importantly, his eBay store. <laughs> yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. And uh, I've just added, uh, I've just put a crap load into the store. Um, Including every single leaf color except for green. How does that work? How are you going to get every color but green? Because uh, green was the one I got stuck with last time. Oh, yeah. Last time yeah. I bought, no, I think I bought, does, bought 5,000 green and 3,000 dark green, and the dark green sold out like that, and I had the green for forever. Yeah. So there's not a big, there's not a huge profit margin at all on those leaves. Mm -hmm. So. When I get a regular coming in who's maxing out on their coupons, who's got like, you know, doom -ba -doom -ba -doom, I'm basically, you know, losing a, just a smidgen of money on it, but that's all right. Uh, all right. Talking on, talking on. And then uh, we'll get to the conclusion of the weird story of the least mature seller uh, that I've experienced in a while next week. Hopefully that, that NSS will be complete. So. <laughs> I'm Big B, I'm Brick. He's Big Sue Bricks. Oops. Next week we might have other people if they respond to their invites. But if not, it's just the two of us. See y'all.